guys, it's Crystal and Shanley, your Owl Crate customer service team. And we are here to do the mid-year book freak out tag. This was originally done by Chani and Ellie, and we'll leave a link to their channels down below. Um, Shanley is new to the book tag business. Hello. And I panic when left alone in front of the camera. <laughs> so we are going to do this together today. We're and supporting each other. Yes. So um, we're going to go through the list and talk about some books. Excellent. So the first prompt is the best book you've read so far in 2019. For me, it's Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly. It's sort of a continuation of the Cinderella story, but the, the really, really grim one where the stepsisters cut off parts of their feet to try to fit the slipper. And that's literally where it picks up. And it's real good. It's kind of heartbreaking at points, but it's also got some fantasy elements to it. And it's superb. I loved it. Nice. Uh, I have a tie because I couldn't decide. And that was between We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal and Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto. I loved them both so much. Um, they both came as a surprise. I didn't really know what either of them were about. I just kind of dove in and I just loved the adventure, the characters, and everything. Both are great adventure stories and the team dynamic in We Hunt the Flame is just incredible. And in Crown of Feathers, I really enjoyed Veronica and Tristan's storyline together, and also Zeb's. I just, I loved everybody, and so it was a really hard choice between the two of them. Our second prompt is the best sequel you've read so far in 2019. Alright, so mine is the third volume of Rainbow Rowell's run on The Runaways, which is called mm -hmm. That Was Yesterday. Um, the first two volumes do a really good job of sort of picking up from where The Runaways by Brian came up. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn um, started in the early 2000s and volume three kind of takes that foundation and sort of just goes to town with it and starts to set up a whole new different oh, awesome. adventure and it was so excellent. Plus, you know, Rainbow Rowell, sucker for her stuff. So the third volume is lovely. Nice. Um, the best sequel I've read so far this year is Queen of Ruin by Tracy Banghart. That is the sequel to Grace and Fury. Um, I was lucky enough to read an arc back in January and I read it in like two days because I had to give it to somebody else. And I just loved being back in that world. I love those characters so much. Um, Grace and Fury is the story of Serena and Nomi, who are two sisters who get sent to a palace, but the wrong one is chosen to be the Grace, which is one of the heirs, ladies in waiting kind of thing. <laughs> And the other one, through something crazy, is sent to prison on a volcano island. And it's just crazy. And I just loved everyone in it. I'm so excited to reread uh, Queen of Ruin with a couple friends of mine. And I'm currently rereading Grace and Fury now. Uh, I think this was one of my favorite books last year. So if you haven't read this, please pick it up. So the third prompt is a new release that you haven't read yet that you want to. So I've been dying to read Descendant of the Crane by Joan He for a long time now and still haven't read it yet, although I think my copy of the library is coming in real soon. Um, and it's sort of like a Chinese-inspired fantasy with royalty and outlawed magic and a ton of deception, and that's all my stuff that I love, <laughs> every bit of it, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Nice. And I, I really hope the library has my copy <laughs> now. Oh, the library. Come on. Come on. Um, mine is uh, The Soul of the Sword, which is the sequel to Shadow of the Fox. I am late to this bandwagon. I'm about halfway through Shadow of the Fox right now, and I'm obsessed. So I really want to read the sequel as soon as possible. Um, I just hear nothing but good things, and a friend of mine's just obsessed. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. All right, so what are you waiting for? <laughs> I feel like this is going to be an obvious choice for a lot of people. I'm just going to double down and do it anyway. Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. Because <laughs> I'm so excited for future adventures of Simon, Baz, and Penny in America. I'm so excited. And I, think I didn't she... even think of that being an option. <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> That's just immediately what my brain figured out what to do as soon as I was like, most anticipated. And I'm like, Wayward Son. I need it now. I need it now. I'm so excited. <laughs> I didn't realize they would be in America. That's cool. 
Did, yeah, I, did I, I miss that at the end of the other book? Is that the first no, thing no, no? They're into? they're still in England at the end of the okay. first book. But I guess I don't know. Great American Road Trip with Wizards. What? Come on. Um, um mine because I was stumped. And so I went with my obvious, which is Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Mm. The conclusion to the Cruel Prince series. And I know that's not what the series is called, but my mind's blanking on me. But yeah, <laughs> I just, I again, another series. I was completely late to the bandwagon. I think I only read them both at the end of December and then when uh, The Wicked King came out. And I just need to know how it ends. I can't even. If, I mean, I'm sure you've read them. If you haven't, I highly suggest picking them up. Because, wow, I I need to know what happens. Number five, biggest disappointment. So this, yeah, I feel bad about saying this, but mine is um, Comics Will Break Your Heart by Faith Aaron Hicks. Hmm. I really love Faith Aaron Hicks so much. I love so many of the work she's already made, and she has a graphic novel coming out with Rainbow Rowell later this year as well that I'm really excited for. And... This one just was not what I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. It was sort of billed as like an enemies to lovers, Ju Romeo and Juliet kind of trope, which I eat that. Yes. I eat that definitely. up. All the way. But just immediately when I got into it, it's not what I wanted it to be. And it was kind of a bit of a letdown. I didn't end up finishing it. So I do intend to maybe pick it up again a little bit later with maybe like lower expectations. Oh, I feel, chance. yeah, I feel like I, I put it too high because I love all of her stuff already. So I, I'll, I'll try to revisit it at some point, but yeah. That's a bit of a letdown. So far, that's the one. Mine was, um, I always feel bad saying I don't like books, but this is the first book I've DNF'd in a very long time, and mm. that was 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. I really loved the hating game. It was kind of like an enemies to lovers kind oh, of deal, yeah. and I just loved the tension and the suspense, and the, oh my goodness, I'm just eating this book up. Um, but I started listening to the audiobook for 99% Mine, and it just just seemed to drag. It's like, you're clearly attracted to her. She's clearly attracted to you. You guys are stuck in this small fight. D just get it over with. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I didn't need to finish because I was like, this is just going to go on forever. And I just kind of called it quits. You I was kind of bummed out because yeah. I wanted a good steamy romance. <laughs> and you got to kind of like get that ball rolling a little early with enemies to yeah. lovers kind of a trope because it's great but it's like it's also that they weren't even they were in the hating game enemies to lovers but in this one they're like old friends and he's mm. like besties with her brother and it's kind of like a no-go zone but they're adults now and it's just like can, you guys need to get over yourselves i just there's like five bedrooms in this house you're <laughs> you can make it happen <laughs> choose one <laughs> um Next up, number six, biggest surprise. An absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. Oh. I know a lot of people were like over the moon excited for his like first release book, and I was sort of ambivalent towards it. I like Hank Green, but I was never really like massively on board for it. So I picked it up even after reading a lot of people really disliked the ending, and I loved it. Yeah. I loved the ending. It is a massive cliffhanger, but it felt so right for the story and for the characters. I actually laughed out loud when I read the <laughs> ending because it just it like just drops you and like you want to know exactly what happens right then. And I was just like, this is great. I love it. Oh, awesome. Mine was uh, the Puzzle Lady series by Parnell <laughs> Hall. <laughs> In my like effort to like expand my crime novel reading, um, I was at the library a few months ago and I picked up uh, one of his books called Presumed Puzzled. <laughs> And it was like a cozy mystery about a kind of slightly alcoholic woman who lives with her niece and solves murders with crossword puzzle clues. <laughs> and I did not know what to expect at all. But after I read that one, I went back to the first book in the series and I just finished this one. The second one's on hold at the library and it was just like, I'm glad I found a new thing to just unwind to. And I'm also obsessed with crossword puzzles lately, so it seemed like a perfect fit. <laughs> so like a cozy murder mystery. Yeah, a cozy murder mystery in a really small, like, New England kind of town. And just murders and puzzle clues and, like, weird stuff. But the cast of characters within the small town is just so good. It's just, it's my new favorite thing. <laughs> that's, that sounds absolutely yeah. delightful. I've never heard of the series, and I, <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Number seven, favorite new author, either a debut or new to you. 
so new to me, and I actually have a book for this one, um, Tilly Walden. I first read um, Spinning by her, which I initially thought was just like her first book, like her debut, and it is not. She's got a ton of books out, which was a huge and lovely surprise to me. So she's got like four or five books out now. I've read most of them. She draws and sort of writes with these like beautiful pastels and melancholia and nostalgia, and it's just nice and sad and they're she's wonderful i love her stuff and this spinning one was the figure skating like yeah. memoir or something like yeah, that yeah about her life growing up as like a group figure skater and kind of hating it but not knowing how to get out of it oh, that sounds cool she's great she's wonderful so my new to me author in my quest to read more crime writers is janet ivanovic and i'm currently reading her um fox and o'hare series which is an fbi agent and like a professional con man <laughs> who kind of teamed up to solve other crimes for the FBI and like take down bad guys. Um, I've actually just finished the fifth book in the series which was The Big Kahuna. Um, the fifth book was actually written by her and somebody else which is whose name I can't remember but it's different from the first four books, the writer that she co-wrote the first four books with and it was kind of a letdown for such a strong series but if a sixth book comes out I'm definitely gonna read it. Uh, she's just so much fun, mm. and you see her books all the time at the bookstore. She takes up like an entire section in the mystery section, and but the Stephanie Plum series was just seemed too daunting to jump into at like book somewhere in the high twenties. So I jumped into the smaller series, and yeah, it was uh, she's awesome, and I think I might pick up a few more of her books. She's nice. got a few different series. I think I might tackle the smaller ones before I jump into the the big one. Nice. Number eight, newest fictional crush. Okay, so this is when things get, are going to get a little weird here. <laughs> um, I don't really get fictional crushes on characters. It's not really a thing that's really ever happened in my reading experiences. So to answer this one, I had to go to like, okay, what was the most like intriguing character for me? And uh, I'm going to have to say Death from the Book Thief. <laughs> Specifically, though, the audiobook of the Book Thief, which is narrated by Alan ordiner because he does he has the best voice oh yeah for death which is <laughs> oh boy 13 year old emo me is even shaking her head at me right now um it's he his voice is just so sonorous and it's just so deep and it's exactly what you think death should sound like <laughs> and he just he pulls it off so well since the story is narrated by death hmm. and like, he gives, like, tiny little accents to all the other characters, because still death narrating all these other characters who are speaking. Oh, okay. And he varies his voice and pitch for each character, and he does it so, so well. So, I guess, fictional crush. Death. <laughs> That's a sign of a good audio video. <laughs> um, I usually crush hard, and I can't really think of, like, anybody that I was totally obsessed with. But, to keep it fun... I went through a phase a couple months ago where I just binged, listened to like YA contemporary audiobooks, mm. and from my favorite Casey West, um, I really enjoyed Xander from The Distance Between Us. I thought he was very charming. He was a very cute boy. <laughs> and I guess for that week of listening, I was just like, oh, he's the best. So yeah, Casey West is where it's at for like crushy boys. You need you need a good crushy boy. Yeah, you know, like Casey West. Yeah. the best ones, right? She does. It's hard to choose a favorite of her books. I'm obsessed with her. But yeah, I'm going to go with the Sander. He was, he was the rich boy kind of dating the not-so-rich girl, but he was just so genuine and so nice and handsome, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a pretty and pink thing situation going on there. Maybe. <laughs> but not, not as cheesy. <laughs> um, number nine, newest favorite character. So I'm double dipping for this one, and it's going to be Isabel, the main character from Ste Stepsister. Um, she was like an emotional roller coaster of a character <laughs> the whole time, because the world she lives in is very patriarchal, and she sort of understands what it takes to be a woman that's accepted in that world. Even if she herself wants to like rebel against it, she can't totally bring herself to do that. She's also very beaten down, but she's iron-willed, and she's just like these polar opposites and sort of like goes back and forth throughout the entire story. <laughs> and I mean, that feels so genuine and real and sad. Oh. And when she finally gets that like heroic moment, it's so exciting. 
Nice. She's sensational. I'm gonna have to Isabel. add this to my reading list. I think. Please, it's so good. <laughs> um, my favorite, even though I'm not even done, is Yumiko from Shadow of the Fox. I love her so much. <laughs> And she just has, she's spent her whole life growing up in a temple with a bunch of monks and she's never really branched, like ventured out into the rest of the world until now. And she's kind of on the road with an ex Ronin samurai guy and another dark demon killer guy. As you do. And she's just overflowing with innocence. She kind of reminds me of when Rapunzel first leaves the tower in the Tangled movie and everything's just like so new and she's so happy no. and she's so nice to absolutely everybody and it's just, I just love her so much and I can't wait to see how she uh, manages through the rest of this book and hopefully into the next. No spoilers, please. <laughs> she didn't even finish that she's already No, she's character. awesome. I'm obsessed with her. Dang. I'm like fan art Googling and I'm like... There's not much. There should be more. Links in the comments if you know good <laughs> fan art. <laughs> That's high praise, though. Mm -hmm. um, number 10. Book that made you cry. Sadie. My Courtney Summers. For obvious reasons, I think, to people who have read the book. Um, so this book is about a girl who's trying to avenge the death of her younger sister and it's sort of told in like dual perspectives both from her perspective but also from the perspective of a reporter on a podcast who's following her story like some months or even a year later so you sort of get this like bad feeling the moment you start reading like it's you don't think it's gonna be good you hope but you don't know and the whole book itself is is so sad so beautiful and tragic but yeah it definitely definitely made me cry this is an interesting one for me because I'm such a crier. Like, I will cry if it's happy. I will cry if it's sad. I will just be like, oh, it's beautiful. I'm weeping. <laughs> I have not cried this year. And I've read, like, what is it? Four Casey West books. I read Love and Luck by Jenna Evan, Janet Evans Welch. And I've read uh, This is What Happy Looks Like by Jenna Feet Smith. And usually she just destroys me every time. But I'm tear free so far. So I'm, I'm waiting for something really bad to happen in one of the books I'm reading. <laughs> And then it'll be all over from there. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be like a, like, like a dam, you know. It's all just yeah. gonna build and then it'll pour out all at once. It's gonna be great. Ooh, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, number eleven, a book that made you happy. All Fair in Middle School by Victoria Jameson. Uh, she also wrote the Roller Girl graphic novel. Oh, cool. And All Fair is a middle grade about a girl going to school for the first time, public school for the first time. Uh, she's always been homeschooled because her family works and lives at a renaissance fair and so it's sort of experiencing like you know high school uh sorry middle school friendships middle school bullying and just like family dynamics all sort oh, of at this like really turmoil heavy time in this girl's life and while that seems like it might be heavy it's really light and just delightful and also she works at her and lives in a renaissance fair <laughs> like it's just a nice. whole other world i never would have considered is excellent. It's pretty cool. Um, in my obsession with YA contemporary <laughs> this past like month or two, um, I read There's Something About Sweetie by Sanjay Menon and mm. I loved her first two books. And this book was just so good and I listened to the audiobook just I guess at the perfect time and I was just like, this book's great. And yeah, it just made me smirk around the house. <laughs> yeah. I liked it. All right, so number 12, the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or have been given? Bought and hands down, Laura Dinky's Breaking Up With Me by Marika Tamaki and Rosemary Valerio O'Connell because it's so gorgeous with pastel colors, but the story itself is sad and tragic. And you have like our main character, Freddie, sort of like looking out kind of imploringly to you. Like when I first saw this cover, I just, I knew I needed to read the story behind it. Which I think is the mark of a great cover. It is really And it's pretty. just gorgeous. Is I the inside it. just as pretty? Is it it's, a graphic novel? It is a graphic novel, another graphic novel. Nice. Um, and the color in this one is actually only pinks. Nice. With like black and white, which sort of like really gives a fantastic tone to the whole thing. Nice. So like the whole design concept of this book, excellent. Cool stuff. 
everyone knows about my obsession with Arla Finch and <laughs> I treated myself and I ordered the German edition because it's illustrated and beautiful even though I can't read German and uh, yeah I mean Dang. yeah it's so pretty and it's illustrated inside but just I'm obsessed with the international covers for this book. I need the French one and the Swedish one as well to round out this little collection. And the sequel, uh, Arlo Finch and the Lake of the Moon, was just released as a German edition and it's just as beautiful. So I'm going to have to hit up Amazon.de yet again and make another purchase. And yeah. It's got some serious, like, Stranger Things vibe. Yeah. And I'm, I like it. It's got like a little anime looking feel to it. A little bit, but, uh, a little bit. Yeah. But the colors chosen for it are beautiful. They just pop. And this is kind of like textured and it's just, ugh, thanks Germany. <laughs> <laughs> um, last one. And that is number 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Far too many. <laughs> Far too many. But it. rapid fire list. I got Lady's Guide to Par Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie yes, Lee. do. I know. I love the first one, and I just kept putting this one off, and I'm just... I hate myself for it. Um, and then going off what you said earlier, I also have The Cruel Prince and the Wicked King by Holly Black on here, which I absolutely have to read, <laughs> ideally, before Queen of Nothing comes out. And then With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Achevito, who wrote um, oh, I know uh, The Poet X. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Loved The Poet X. Read that in one sitting, and just haven't picked this one up yet, because... I don't know why. So those are my top contenders for Need to Finish. I touch you, but then I'm about to show you all <laughs> what I have to read. So not only do I need to read Finale by Stephanie Garber, I also need to read Caraval and Legendary Oof. because I'm the worst Alfred employee <laughs> and I have read none of them. So that's like my, my miniature goal that I'll maybe reach by the end of the year is to read this trilogy because everybody loves it and the fan art online is just so amazing and it seems like the most beautiful, beautiful world. And it's lush, it's Victorian, it's delicious. I have no idea how to experience it, <laughs> but I have three books that I I need to at least start reading before the year. That that's a good goal. Because, that's, a, yeah. that's an attainable goal. But all the books. But all the books. <laughs> so this was our mid-year book freakout tag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye.